to start this episode, we got an infestation to deal with, and it actually reproduced. There's another bug hive over here. So yeah, we gotta take this thing out ASAP. It's been eating all of our rice, and we can't even go down here, because if we do... Oh, that actually didn't cause them revenge. We hit one of the mega spiders. If we go down here, then yeah, they'll all aggro. And there we go, they're aggroed. And, oh crap, they're attacking our butcher table. No matter, we can always repair that. So we got a defense set up over here, and we got some embrasures built into this monument. We've turned this monument into kind of a defense bunker type thing. And we put our turret in there, and we got people in there just holding up. And Rularo is quick enough to avoid these guys, I think. Only problem is we're running through our wind turbine, which is not good. But it looks like it was not tagged too hard. And oh no, Alpaca 3 is over here fighting a couple of these insects. So we're going to have Weasel come out here and help him out. And hopefully he can save it. We've knocked out three of the mega spiders. That's huge because those are the strongest insects. And it looks like Weasel is, in fact, I don't know, he's fighting the... Spilopede. I don't know if he's gonna win. Rolaro is doing a good job though. We're gonna have him turn off running gun and just run because running gun does slow whoever is using it. And I think if he just keeps kiting in a circle, we should definitely have this for sure. There's only five more insects left, four. And actually, we just killed one. The rest of them we knocked out, and I was kind of waiting for this moment because our Necromancer Llama has the ability Corpse Explosion, and we're gonna use that on this thing. It's gonna blow up in three, two, one, boom. We got two hits on that. That was pretty good. It doesn't do like a crazy amount of damage, but uh, there we go. We knocked out another insect, a Mega Scarab's down. We're gonna have Llama use Corpse Explosion. I don't know if we're gonna be able to get the timing on this. Yeah, I think so. We're gonna get them all, I think. Three, two, one. Never mind. we missed them. The important thing though is we killed all the insects minus this one. And well, that's how you deal with an infestation, although one of them did just reproduce another mega spider. We're gonna have to bring this over here and we'll just have the turret take it out. And is the turret out of ammo? No, it's almost though. It's only got 10 shots left. And we got another, holy cow, okay. We should bring other people back over here. Three more insects are coming in. Four. And I actually see what's going on. So there was another insect hive and all those insects from that hive decided to attack us. So we're clearing out the other hive here, which is good. And we managed to take two of them out. And we got a bunch of corpses here. Let's use corpse explosion on this little guy. Oh man, that's close. Rolaro, actually they swung at Rolaro and he almost got tagged. And we missed that corpse explosion. Four, three, two, nope, not gonna do it. Well, but it looks like that's the end of these insects. We have no more infestations now to deal with. So that's awesome. And we can clear out those bug hives for a lot of insect jelly. After defeating all those insects, we grabbed everything in the base along with the insect jelly. And unfortunately, it looks like we're not getting the greatest price for this insect jelly because I think a lot of it has deteriorated. They don't seem to have anything that we want. Just a couple of mage spells. We'll just buy out pretty much all their silver with a couple more leathers. And with that, we'll be on our way. I was thinking we'd head down to these tribal villages, but if we go way east over here, we can get over to Ridgeness, who will trade with us, and Maka Wood, which is part of the Cedo Nation, and they are magic users. There's a certain script we're looking for from the magic users, and we could craft it ourselves, but it takes a lot of materials, and we don't have the tech for it yet. It says it's going to take 4.1 days to get over here. However, Rolaro, who's in this caravan, is a wand so the difficulty level of all these terrains is reduced dramatically. It's probably only going to take a day, maybe two. We had a transport pod crash where Oscar, who wasn't even really injured that bad, he just had a crack on his ribcage spine and a stab on his foot, but he wasn't even bleeding that bad. So we were able to easily rescue him. The main thing is he's got alcohol addiction, a bunch of tolerance to it, smoke leaf dependence and tolerance. This dude is just an absolute mess. On top of the fact he's the stereotypical drunken monk and he is incapable of violence. So Monk gives him all these nice bonus stats to melee, but he can't even do melee. He is good at animals and crafting though, and it wouldn't actually be too bad to have him stick around, although he's a part of the Northeast Omatithian, and those are the guys that we're actually going to trade with right now. If he joins us on his own free will, that'd be cool, but if not, we're just gonna let him go, and that's gonna increase relations with the Northeast Omatithian. Back up to, I think, above zero. Right now, we're negative 12 with them. And there he goes. Oscar exited the map healthily. We're back up to three 
relation with the Northeast Omatithian, which is awesome. I don't believe we want to piss those guys off. I think they're pretty advanced. All right, we finally made it over to the Northeast Omatithian, and yeah, it took a couple days. They also have a few really nice slaves they'll sell us, and they have some muffalo. I would not mind bringing some muffalo back to our base. We're going to sell off all of our smoke leaf joints, thrombo fur, tiger leather, and yeah, wow, that's actually way more than they can even afford with just their silver. We'll pick up most of their silver, and we're actually going to head over here to Maca Wood. And there's a specific item I'm looking for. I'm not sure if they're going to have it, but if they don't, we'll come back here and pick up one of these guys as slaves. All right, we made it over to the CDO Nation, and unfortunately, these guys do not have the script we're looking for, but they will buy all of our remaining leathers for 2k. These guys do, however, have this really powerful Orb of Conviction. It costs 1900 which is fairly expensive, but you can use this once on someone, and they'll swap over to our faction. So we made it back to the richness of Northeast Omatithian, and all their slaves are gone. I guess they restocked on their goods. I think they do this every few weeks. They do, however, have this Lightning Spell Eye of the Storm, which I believe is the ultimate ability for a Lightning Mage. The price definitely reflects that at a whopping 2700 This isn't the ultimate ability we were looking for. We were looking for the Lich Scroll, but this one could be really good. I have absolutely no idea how it works or what it does. We do have some extra gold that was lying around the base, and we'll sell them all of that. And with that extra money, we're going to pick up another Orb of Conviction. So that's two people that we can convert to join us. And we're going to pick up this Wand of Fire, which is going to boost the damage of our Lightning Mage that's going to join us by 15% and give her more mana regen. So we got everyone back to base and MK is going to join us pretty soon. She's got 5.5 resist left and then we'll be able to teach her the master scroll. Until then though we got this quest, the attentive prisoner and we got to keep this guy prisoner for 9 days and he's sick with blood rot. The reward we're going to take for this quest is some gold, a LTEC shirt which gives more psychic sensitivity and neural heat recovery rate. And psychic sensitivity is good because it buffs like this psychic reader and the power of this thing is proportional to the user's psychic sensitivity. Basically it increases negotiation ability by, it says a base 50% but I'm guessing it's not that much unless they have really high psychic sensitivity. This would be really good to give to Frog though as he already has 13 social and with his jealous trait he gets more negotiation ability and trade price improvement. And negotiation ability I guess affects the speed of prisoner recruitment, impact on faction relations when giving gifts, and the outcome of peace talks. The speed of prisoner recruitment is actually really useful. So yeah for the quest we got this prisoner dweeb that we have to protect for 9 days and we did tend his blood rot with a 44% tend. It's going up slowly but not that quickly and actually it's going down that's good so it looks like with at least a 44% 10 he's not gonna die to blood rot or she I guess MK's mood is really good right now can frog get 3.2 resist down with one chat she is on smoke leaf we gave her smoke leaf ah oh, it got her down to 0.6 that was still really good but yeah if you go over to operations tab and you go add bill you can give prisoners smoke leaf if you do like an operation on them and it basically injects them with the smoke leaf and that improves their mood and it just makes them easier to recruit and all right we got our first mechanoid cluster which actually this is not that bad considering for the quest the attentive prisoner within 6.8 days we should get rated twice and the thing about this mechanoid cluster is it's almost perfectly positioned up by our choke point the raiders are are probably gonna have to run through this in order to get to us. They do have four turrets here as well as they have a mech capsule that I guess has some mechs in it and then they got a smoke spewer which can spew enough smoke up in the air to block out the sun. It says it's gonna initiate in 11 days although there's a countdown activator that's gonna activate in 4.6 and so I think that's all we have 4.6 days and this thing's gonna become active and that will be kind of annoying considering that we have a bunch of crops that we're growing and crops will not be able to grow without sunlight. And there we go, MK ended up joining us. The only ability she starts with is Lightning Bolt, and this is completely random. She could have all of her abilities, except for I don't think she can have her ult. But Lightning Bolt is an ability that we can kind of spam to just get her XP. Oh, and also she starts at a level 2 and she has 2 points available. We could teach her this ability Lightning Cloud, which apparently can damage and stun anything in its miss. Before we decide what to do though, we're going to teach her her ult. Eye of the Storm. And actually this ability does not have a very long cooldown. It's only 10 second cooldown. It's just that the mana cost is insane. 65 mana. So with our two points we get spec Perfect Storm. Expands the strike radius by one for each skill level. Base radius is five. So we could get the radius up to seven or we could go for a drain atmosphere. Reduce the mana cost by 5% per skill level. With two points we could reduce it by 10% and we can almost cast it twice before running fully out of mana. Or we could go for Rend Earth. Increase the frequency of the eye's lightning strikes by 20% per level and increase the damage of each strike by 20%. I feel like this one's going to be really good. 40% more damage and 40% more frequency of lightning strikes. It seems like a lot. So yeah, we're going to spec into that. And here we go. The raid's finally here for our attempted prisoner quest. We got raiders from the northwest, raiders from the east, and raiders from the southwest. I'm hoping the raiders from the east and the southwest are going to run right through this mechanoid cluster. And here they come. It looks like they're going to run possibly right through this proximity activator. Oh yeah, they're going to touch it, I think. Are they? 
Are they wait, they're running right through it. Oh, there we go. Okay, it woke them up. And yeah, these mechanoids are pissed. It looks like a few of them are running by the mechanoids, but a lot of them are fighting. And actually, no, they're all coming back to bite the mechanoids. They were heading through our maze, but then they decided to help out their fellow brethren. There's a couple turrets that are still up. This auto-charge turret's actually getting pretty low. And there's a scyther running through these guys, which is a melee mechanoid. Uh, it's attacking Brius, who did dodge. Oh, and then this guy actually just went out. And what did Kuro just do? That must have been some kind of arcane mage ability. There's a lot of fire going on right now, and I'm thinking we want to make it rain. And oh, okay, some of these guys are running. Yeah, we don't want this fire to burn up the entire jungle, so we're going to use Rainmaker. Are these raiders just completely wiped out by these mechanoids? There's only one group left, and another rhino actually just self-tained while this was going down. And the rhino actually wants to run right through these mechanoids. We don't want that, so we're going to put an area over here, and we're going to make it run to that area. Sir Vexa, stop shooting at a rhino. And you just tagged a rhino. Why would you do that? While that was going down, this guy Biagura actually got knocked out. He's going to die in seven hours. We're going to have MK try to send an Eye of the Storm over to... I wonder if we should blow up these power cells. That could start a chain reaction. I think, yeah, they have the range to kill this auto turret, and then that might blow up and kill this one. We're going to try to do that. I don't know how this ability works, and... Okay, it just... Oh, actually, okay, we killed Biagura. Wow. And... Holy cow, this thing is strong. It actually did enough damage to set off the power cell. And okay. Well, unfortunately we killed Biagura, but we ended up killing the rest of the mech clusters. Most of that damage was coming from the power cell blowing up. But yeah, I the storm, wow, that was actually a pretty sick ability. And here we go. The last raid for the quest, I believe. And I'm wondering if MK can just solo this whole thing. They're lined up in such a perfect line we did also just wait before this hits mk got two more level ups and we put one more point into rend earth so now there's going to be 60 percent more lightning strikes and it's going to do 60 percent more damage we also put one point in a drain atmosphere so it costs less mana and the goal is we want to be able to cast two of these and yeah okay here we go it's about to hit these guys and okay <laughs> it's just wait it's not hitting all of them but it's wait it's knocked out three of them they're running <laughs> Four of them. They knocked out four of them and they're running. Okay, that's a little bit OP, maybe? Wait, they had some mana pods, actually. That's really nice. We're going to make it rain because we don't want to burn up these guys. And the question is, can we rescue all these guys? We rescued three. Orange is actually burning. I don't think he's bleeding, though. Yeah, he's not bleeding. And we were able to capture him, too. Alrighty, well, we captured four more prisoners, including this alpaca. Now, the question is, are any of them good? They weren't actually bleeding, and they're not going to bleed out because the lightning apparently doesn't cause them to bleed. So the first guy we're going to take a look at is Orange, who is a careful shooter, and it's kind of the opposite of Trigger Happy. He takes extra time to aim, but gets five more shooting accuracy. I'm not sure how good this actually is. I think Trigger Happy is definitely the preferable trait, where they get way less aiming time. But maybe this would be good if, like, we gave him a sniper rifle. He does have seven shooting with a minor passion for it so he would be a good candidate for someone that we'd want to train up to be a good fighter. He's also got a burning passion for animals with some mining, so he's not super useless around base. And he's got six intellectual, so he could be a researcher. He's also got the trait super immune, which is really nice. 30% more gain speed, so he's not going to die from any illnesses. Dragonfly seems to not be too amazing at anything in particular, although she is a fast learner, so she learns 75% quicker. So it's basically like she has burning passions for all the abilities that she has minor passions for. So we could really train her up to do pretty much anything. Or we could just have her be like a meat shield and have her do melee. She's got six in melee. Circa's got a burning passion for plants with 13 in it. That's really nice. Although she is a slow poke, so she moves slower and she's slothful, so she works a lot slower. This does also make it so she's less likely to have a mental breakdown though, which is nice. And she's kind, so she can brighten people's days up. Finally, Okapi is psychically dull, so she doesn't care about like psychic drones. And she's also a fast learner, so we could just stick her on planting and she'd learn that fairly quickly. There's a lot of blood in here and that's actually from this alpaca, which which is going to die in four hours. None of these guys are actually bleeding. There we go. We need to stop the bleeding on that thing. And we just got an event. New lovers. Frog wooed MK apparently. And now they want to sleep together. That's really nice. Because we are going to need more bedrooms. I was kind of rooting for Frog too to woo one of our female colonists. As he's like our main combat guy. He's the one that's been doing all the shooting. He's trigger happy. He's also doing all the trading and stuff. And he's got good social. Like you would think he'd be able to make a move. If anyone knows how to woo the females. It's going to be someone with good social. And there we go. The shuttle has arrived to collect Dweeb. We're having Griffith carry him out. And that should be the end of the quest. We're going to send him off. And yep, quest completed. 
The pods have arrived for the Psychic Reader, the Eltex shirt, and the gold. With that 51 extra gold we just picked up, that's actually a perfect amount to make Frog a royal bed. We just need 50 gold and 100 wood, and that's a double bed, so we can have Frog use it with MK, and they'll both get the bonuses for having a really nice room and a really nice bed. With the Beeble's 15 construction skill, there's a 30% chance it's excellent, 50% chance it's good, so we're gonna hope for excellent, and it turned out to be good. Apparently the royal bed gives 5% more rest effectiveness, but gives 15 more comfort, so that's actually kind of a big deal. With Frog in his new bed, we're now going to install the Psychic Reader on him. We're using two Glitter World Medicine for this, and with Abibo's 10 Medical, I think this should work. It is kind of a scary operation because we're installing it into his head, and so we're going to hope that this Glitter World Medicine pays off and this doesn't end up, I don't know, somehow killing Frog or something. And it looks like it was effective. He now has the Psychic Reader installed, and there was no mishaps with the operation. She didn't accidentally like cut off his leg or something. I think that Psychic Reader is just going to add a bunch more negotiation ability to frog so he can recruit all of our prisoners a lot easier although i can't tell right now because he's sedated so we're gonna have to wait for him to wake up in the meantime llama's now level six and we gave her the ability raise undead you can raise multiple undead based on how many points you have into powered creation right now we have no points in it so we can only raise two and actually we're only going to raise one for now as each undead human will incur a mana upkeep cost of 30 percent of her base mana regen and so unless we find humans that are really good it's really not worth to raise them this guy though is actually pretty good below the archer He's got 12 shooting and okay, yeah, we just raised her and her skills all went away. Okay, she now has 10 melee and nothing in animals. She does have nine mining though, so we could just have her auto mine. I wonder if they just get like random skills then. That might be the case. Maybe we'll raise this guy too, Dweba the Brave who was good at melee. Dwebia, yeah, it looks like they get random skills. Now Dwebia is good at construction. And we can have her mine too. Six mining is not that bad. It looks like undead all of the traits psychopath. And so I don't think they care about like seeing bodies and being near people when they get killed. And yeah, actually this is really cool. Apparently undead do not hunger and they do not become tired. They do move a lot slower though, minus two. So they're, yeah, they're really slow and they work a lot slower. They work 50% slower. But Billow is gonna be mining around the base nonstop and Dwebia will be building nonstop with their 10 construction. Looks like Frog's anesthesia is finally worn off and he's back up to 100% consciousness. And we can now see his negotiation ability is 237%. And I think that can be boosted by psychic sensitivity. It says psychic reader plus 50% because he has 100% psychic sensitivity. But what if we boosted that? If we give him this Eltec shirt, which we got from the quest reward, and that gives him 10% more psychic sensitivity, that boosts his negotiation ability up to 245%. And he's gonna try to recruit Srika now, who, by the way, he has really good relations with Krika. And Krika's not a terrible move. Like, his mood is above neutral. They've been talking for a while though, and yeah, he has 100 relations with Krika. I think with this high negotiation ability, yeah, he joined. I don't know what the chance of that was, but I think it was pretty high. I don't know if I ever went over Krika, but he's a prisoner we've had for quite some time. He's a tortured artist, and it gives him a negative A mood effect. However, when he does have a mental breakdown, which he should be having often, and we might even try to make him have mental breakdowns, because every time he does have a mental breakdown, there's a 50% chance afterwards to get a creativity inspiration, and I'm hoping this is going to apply to crafting because he has 10 crafting he's our best crafter right now if he does get crafting inspirations with tortured artists he could make legendary stuff which normally you can't their only way to make legendary stuff is if you get an inspiration we don't currently have anything from the craft right now but we are and whoa love is in the air apparently we have more lovers now that's two more people they're going to be able to sleep together that is completely awesome but yeah just to start leveling up Krika's crafting we're going to have her start making helmets at our machining table we just built and that is getting her crafting up slowly but surely the first one he made was a good one and these helmets aren't super amazing or anything they just protect the head and the ears they don't protect the eyes and i'm actually not sure if they can get like shot through their eyes to the point where it'd be like a fatal shot or if like their eyes can just just get shot out but yeah these are pretty much like the lowest tier of the decent helmets like right now we have people wearing cowboy hats which give 16 percent protection so this is going to be a big step up from that but it's still not super amazing or anything the main thing is they are really easy to make they only require 40 ingredients so we can make them out of steel so yeah we can make these for everyone the last thing i wanted to see before we ended today's episode was how much resist frog can get down with his new crazy amount of negotiation ability he doesn't even have that good of relations with circa like he's got plus eight with circa only and circa 
Erica's mood is, it's okay. It's at 36%. And by the way, she gets negative eight for observing undead. Yep, it looks like everyone is getting that negative eight for observing undead, except for Llama. Well, maybe there is kind of some negatives to having undead work around the base. We'll have to figure out what to do with these guys. We don't want them walking around the base, that's for sure. But yeah, Circa's mood is pretty decent. Let's see how much resist Frog can get down without having a whole lot of relations. 25.8 to 23.7. So that's about to resist. That's quite a lot considering, yeah, her mood's actually only at 36%, so she was at a low mood. It just doesn't look like it because she has a lower mental break threshold because she is slothful. But like for a normal person, 36% mood is barely above minor break. Orange actually has a bit better mood. It's at 43% and it's going up. And he actually has better relation with Frog. Let's see how much resist Frog can get down on Orange. 27.3 to 24.4. So that's almost three. That's a lot. So yeah, we can now recruit prisoners really quick. And with that, I think we're going to end this episode. Before we end it off, I'll go over the base and like what we've done between this episode and the last. To the northwest up here, we have some rich soil and we're just growing some Devil Strand. We need this Devil Strand in order to make our Necromancer spell Lich Form, which is the Necromancer Ultimate. And we need 100 Devil Strand and 360 unrefined find Magikite, which we can get from mining. You just randomly get it when you mine. Currently, we have 241 of it. And if we keep Dwebia mining, then we'll eventually just get enough. As far as the base itself, we have two wind turbines now. And I found out that you can actually build solar generators inside of the wind turbines area, I guess. There's a lot of stuff that if you have trees in this area, it will slow down the wind turbine and block it. And it will produce way less power, if any at all. As for our crops, we're growing a bunch of smoke leaf and we've harvested a bunch. We're going to be able to make a ton of smoke leaf joints. We actually have 1,082 smoke leaf leaves right now. We're in a crop field. We've got a bunch of smoke leaf over here. We're still growing and then we're growing the psychoid plants which we can turn it into wake up and people can use that it's kind of like coffee and they'll do stuff quicker and you can also turn it into go juice which we can make mana pots out of that lastly i guess we'll go over tech with the rim world of magic mod there's a separate tech tree and we've researched down to master scribing so we can now craft ultimate abilities like llama's lich form we could have made mk's ultimate too but it's just so expensive to make here's how our main tech's doing the green is the stuff we've researched and we researched like go juice production so we can make mana pots we also did research electricity a while ago. We've got machining, so we were able to make the machining table, and that's why we're able to make the helmets. And we're going way over here to microelectronics now. We're almost done with that. And once we research that, we can make high-tech research benches, which is going to make it so we research much quicker. And yeah, that's where we're at. I think with that, that's going to be a good place to end the episode. If you guys are liking the series and you want to see it continue, drop a like. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.